Guys, Happy New Year and welcome to the Dine at Home Cook Along. Last one of 2020. Unbelievable, what a year. It's been crazy. Uh, I think this is our 35th week at Dine at Home uh, and all come around or all come about because of coronavirus and essentially being out of work. And uh, it's a huge amount of gratitude and thank you to you guys for helping us and equally supporting us all this way. And we're going to come back in 2021 even stronger. But before then, we have got a sensational New Year's Eve box, uh, which is a massive sellout. Uh, we've actually done a little bit more than what we were, uh, what we'd attended to, because of the odd three box here and there. So we've managed to get all the portions, which is good. And uh, I'm going to go through with you uh, the dining at home box right now for New Year's. So put you all at ease, so you can enjoy your uh, your evening uh, or whenever you choose to obviously eat it. And also tomorrow, I am out on delivery my main man Mikey, we were going to do the Sutton Coalfield area tomorrow, I think I've got like 17 drops, it's pretty likely if you live in the Sutton Coalfield area, I will be knocking on your door in and around 11 to about 1, 2 o'clock tomorrow, so it'd be great to thank you in person, but I do thank everyone of you anyway, uh, obviously without needing to knock on your door. So, without further ado, let's crack on with the menu, the final menu of 2020. So as you all know guys by now, any newcomers to the, uh, to the New Year's Eve menu, uh, this is a Cotswold Crunch loaf. Uh, it's with nine different seeds, a uh, company called Cotswold uh, Flour, Cotswold Crunch. Uh, so that's their particular flour they do with nine uh, different grains in, uh, which I think is absolutely delicious, one of my favourite flours. Uh, that simply goes in the oven at 180 degrees for five minutes. Uh, it's a tear and share style bread. Uh, we have done individual buns as well, uh, so some of you may have two individual cobs, same thing in five minutes. And obviously enjoy that with your mama butter, that's for one person. Uh, so essentially you'll have a, 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 bit, a bit more than that. Uh, and make sure as soon as your uh, your box comes, obviously that'll be rock hard because it's in the fridge. So please make sure you bring that room temperature and potentially just leave it somewhere a bit warm so it softens. Because uh, I mean, I don't know about your kitchen, but my kitchen might be still rock hard on the side. That would be cold in. But uh, anyway, enjoy that together as you as you know. By now, for onto your starter. I've on the menu, I've actually put a sort of a roasted, or I think comfy or roasted comfy duck leg. Uh, so basically we've used the roasted comfy duck leg, and I went a little bit out there and we've made these beautiful uh, gyozas, essentially these gyozas, um, which is basically sort of rice flour, rice paper, and we've steamed them for five minutes uh, with the filling inside. And then on the instructions, as I've said, uh, you can either reheat them by boiling them or ste steaming them. Uh, or you can pan fry them so you have a little bit of nice roastiness to them. They are quite firm because obviously they're set solid now, so they are, the, flour, the, the paper is quite firm. But once you start heating them up and getting some uh, liquid in there, or be if it's a steam or, or a bit of butter from a roast, which I'll go through with you in a second. Alternatively, when you do reheat them, you can actually reheat them in the dashing. So this is your dashing, this is a pot for one. So the majority of you will have a taller pot, uh, which is a liquid, like a liquid uh, Japanese sort of Asian sort of stock. Uh, which has been seasoned with uh, seaweed, uh, soy sauce, mirin, and a bit of rice wine vinegar in there as well. Uh, but essentially, you can actually heat that on the stove very, very gently. You just want to bring it up to sort of about 85 degrees, so a cup of tea sort of temperature, and then just dip your um, uh, your gyozas in them if you're not too confident to pan fry them. About three to four minutes, now come up beautifully, beautifully warm. Essentially, it's just making sure the centre of that gyoza is nice and hot. That's all. Uh, Beautiful, uh, rich celery puree uh, that we've actually, it's, it's super thick to ensure that the, uh, the dashi doesn't split right through so it doesn't become a cloudy mess. And then there's a lovely, really super vibrant chive oil to have a nice bit of, uh, bit of freshness. And then a compressed Granny Smith apple. This one slice uh, is about a centimetre thick and it's for two people. Uh, and that's simply diced. Uh, I will show you how to do that. You'll probably get about 12 to 15 di uh, sort of cubes out of it or four if you're not too good at, <laughs> at cutting. Uh, but we don't use any of the skin because the skin's super, so, so, so you know, obviously we know apple skin is quite sort of tough, so we don't use that. But uh, I will continue and show you how to cook your gyoza. I'm going to do it uh, roasted style in a pan, but again, guys, if you've got a steamer, like an electrical steamer, you just put them in there, really, really easy. Or you can put them, in, as I said, into a dash or even hot water, totally, totally easy. So on the back here, I've got a pan, uh, which I'm just going to pop on the heat, uh, and I'm going to put a little bit of oil, and also with my um, dashing, and then gently pop that into a pan as well. Uh, you can pop it into the microwave uh, if you would like to. Uh, there's certainly nothing against um, putting it into the microwave, uh, but I would I would recommend uh, just heating it through uh, on, the, uh, on the on the stove just because you, you can sort of um, control the heat an awful lot better. So as you can see, move that the way. Nice low heat, pans on, a little bit of oil in there, just 
point to temperature. Uh, with your scenario puree, uh, your tri oil is to be uh, enjoyed at room temperature, as is your apple, uh, but your uh, your um, scenario puree is to be enjoyed obviously hot. So pop that in the microwave for 30 seconds just to eat through, and that would be perfect for the, uh, the dish. Uh, Beans while I'm on it as well, guys, if you haven't got your Wagyu out now, get it out right now and put it close to that butter so it's not that, that area in the kitchen where it's warm because it needs to come up to room temperature, guys. Mine's been out for about two hours. And as you can see, the, 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 fat, the Wagyu fat isn't exactly melted, uh, but it's, the, the actual temperature of it is not fridge. It, it, it's warm, it's not warm, it's, it's, room, it's sort of room temperature, which means the center of it will be room temperature when I cook it, which enables you to get a much more control over it. And essentially, I know it's pre-cooked, but you have to, have to bring it out a good one to two hours before. Just a nice little reminder in case you forgot. Okay, so. Gyozas, this is the side, the flat side is where they're steamed. Essentially, it doesn't matter which side you, you fry them on. I'm going to go the other side, the open side. So pop that in. Just want to hear them start cracking. It won't sizzle, because there's nothing, there's nothing fat in there to sizzle. But it will start to pop ever so slightly, as you can see. Now, I'll colour almost straight away, as you can see on there. I'll colour straight away. Just want to get that in. You get it on a low temperature, so there's nothing too, nothing too adventurous with the temperature at all. start to gradually start to go like a nice caramelised colour. That's the exact colour that we're looking for. And now just like that. And then simply you just watch them and until they get until both sides get that nice colour, that's when we will put a little couple of lumps of butter in and that adds a little bit of lubricant in there as well and allows the butter to get hot and then essentially you can start sort of basting the gyozas afterwards. So that'll probably take about two to three minutes. You can start to see the colorization on there now. I'm gonna flip that over. I'm gonna do the exact same on the other side. So if you join it's about two minutes when the other side is, uh, is nicely uh, roasted as well, or nicely colored. Join about two minutes and I'll add the butter and then I'll do the finishing touches to, I'm gonna to heat up my slurry puree in the same time. Okay, so see you in a couple of minutes. Okay guys, so as you can see, the color of the bows has started to color beautifully. It's both it's the same on both sides as well, so it's very gently dip up. It's then starting to color as well. So now just to help it along, you just want to, I mean, they're, they're essentially cooked, so to help it along, you just want to put a little number of in that. Just like that, my dash is coming to that temperature where you start seeing all the steam coming up. Okay, so that's plenty, plenty hot enough, so I'll leave that to one side. I microwave my, um, my Sarah Puro, the, uh, the container you probably already found out, I hope you haven't, barely lasted five minutes, no, five seconds. So if you want to take that Sarah Puro out and then heat it in a, in a, in a more appropriate microwave or container, that will probably be better. Okay, so as you can see guys, that's starting to colour up beautifully. Don't worry if the skins just start to open a little bit, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that at all. The filling is, uh, is a nice, firm sort of, uh, almost like a sausage sort of texture filling. So you've got absolutely nothing to worry about with that. Now with the, uh, with the butter, see I'm just very gently basting both sides of that. And then what happens is that hot butter will continually cook that pastry. So it gives that a nice sort of crispy coating as it were. As I said to you, if you, want, if you don't want a crispy gyoza, you can just have a nice steamed one, or essentially just pop it in see dashes as I said before. It's totally, totally too. I just like to, add, I just like to do it on the, uh, on the, in the pan, simply because it adds a different texture to the dish, that's all. But again, you can do it with literally whatever you would like. Okay, so they're perfectly good now. So it's all on the same colour, which is nice and crisp, all top and bottom, just like that. I'm gonna leave those in there, just like that. Obviously, it's two, it's two per person. So, um, obviously, you'll be doing four if it's a couple. So, we've had that apple, which is compressed in a little bit of uh, bit of apple juice. So, the apple juice will be in there. So, nice and firm, nice and raw, but you can see it's almost sort of translucent in the centre. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to, I mean, you can obviously eat, you can eat, this, eat, the, uh, eat the outside, it's absolutely fine. I'm just going to cut that into, just like a, just like, just a little bit under a centimetre dice for. 12, just 15. There we are. This is perfectly edible. Then you need to check it. Mm. A burst of a real fresh apple flavour. So in the bowl, we have our um, our pot of warmed celeric puree. Again, guys, as it's the same all year, you can plate this however you would like. This is like the richness of the dish, like the buttery richness. Then you've got your lovely 
the video I use, we're just going to pop a bit of butter on top. I'm going to pop them quite close on top of the uh, top of the stereo puree, just leave it there, beautiful. And then, in my dash sheet, this is obviously for one person, very gently, I'm just going to uh, Very gently, just on the side, pour that in. And don't be too, don't be too fast with the pour, because I said to you before, you don't want the slayer out to curdle, or to make it cloudy. The, the essence of this dish is the fact that the stock's nice and clear. And you want to showcase that off. So, one healthy portion. There's still some left, and then to break that colour contrast, lovely bit of chive oil. It's only one portion as well, you've got loads of uh, those there. I mean, with the apple, you just want to sort of, you, you, you'll barely see it in the dish, but you just want to sort of pop it around, and every now and again with a mouthful, you'll just get a sort of real sharp, sort of fresh texture, uh, crunchy texture and flavour from the apple in there. So there's your start, guys. A little bit of work to do too, but trust me, it's well and truly worth it. So there's your, uh, your duck leg, uh, Gyoza. Obviously make sure the centre's nice and hot, but because it's so warm, it almost steam inside. So your comfy duck leg with a little bit of pork, uh, gyoza, uh, slayer puree with your uh, with your dashi broth, uh, this bit of chive oil, and then compressed apple. It's your New Year's Eve starter. That will 100% get your juices flowing for your beef, uh, which will join you to cook the beef in a couple of minutes after you've enjoyed that. Thank you. So you go. Okay, cheers. That that's one portion. Okay, amazing. Right, okay. On to your main course, guys. Don't tell me you didn't enjoy that starter. That starter is delicious, right? Super, super tasty. So, on to your main course, which is, which I identified. This is a just over 200 gram piece, about 220 gram piece. So, if you're, as you can see, one. If you are a person who's enjoying this on their own, uh, obviously, this would be a type of piece of uh, wagyu you'll get. If you are a couple, you will get essentially about 400 to 500 gram piece. Uh, depending on obviously how I cut it, and equally if you are a trio and three of you are enjoying the box, you will get a 600 gram piece, six to sort of 650. Uh, I portioned it all myself uh, simply because we got the, the rum caps in whole, so they range between five to six kilo each, and we ordered an absolute shed load of them. Uh, so I portioned it, it took me about two hours to portion down. With some of your steak guys, or some of your beef, because we ordered the whole entire piece, you may have a little bit of sinew running through the centre of it. Uh, I've normally gone larger on those pieces, uh, it is edible, of course it is, but it's a little bit, you know, obviously it's quite a harsh texture, you know, quite, quite, it can be quite gristly, but a little bit firm on the fat. If you don't like that texture, obviously just cut it out, guys. But please, it is a rump steak, it's not a fillet, so it has, it's obviously been worked well, and essentially a rump steak is normally a little bit more tougher, should we say, uh, than, 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 say, a fillet or a sirloin. Uh, so this is no different with Wagyu, just because Wagyu doesn't mean it's completely soft like a fillet. Uh, it has got a little bit of texture, but the flavour is incredible. So, yeah, so roast it like a normal steak, which I'm going to show you now how to do it anyway. I'm just going to get my pan on uh, the back so it gives me a little bit of a head start on heat. Uh, but yeah, so essentially, the rump steak will be nice and soft and delicious in flavour, but again, it might have a little bit of texture. So just be careful with that, guys. But anyway, that's for one person. You'll also get a mushroom ketchup, uh, which is, again, for me, for one person. You'll get a delicious bone marrow truffle beef sauce, and that is honestly the best sauce I have made at Diner Home. I'm sorry if you've taken offence to that and you're not happy because you've had numerous sauce in the past and so on and so forth. This is sensational. Inside you will see there's three to four little pieces of bone marrow, okay? It's super rich. We've also cooked the, uh, the vegetables and the, 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 the sort of mushroom and shallots at the start of the, of the cooking process of the sauce. I've also cooked those in, in beef marrow butter. So guys, it is super rich, it stinks of truffle, it stinks of deliciousness, you are going to absolutely love that. This one here is a shallot, okay, you've all bagged them up because we've cooked them individually in again Wagyu fat, so this is a super, super rich dish guys. That is one shallot uh, for one person. Some of the shallots were huge, so we've left them whole, you simply half them, and some of the shallots were small or medium size, like this, so you have one each. How you cook them is totally to you. I'm going to cook this whole because I don't want to halve it. I'm going to cook it whole. If it's massive, obviously halve it because it's, it just look horrible if it's whole anyway. But halve it lengthways and caramelise the insides. Those guys who have seen me before cook shallots and onions, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. 
And there we are guys, finally cooked again in Wagyu fat and a little bit of maple syrup is these Jerusalem artichokes. Again, these have been huge. Some of them have been the size of my fist. So again, we've, 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 we've uh, portioned them accordingly. You may get four small ones, you may get two medium sized ones, you may get one large one. Guys, it's all completely different. Obviously we don't have a, a speck on Jerusalem artichokes, so that's that. Simple, right? Come over here and I'll show you how to reheat and cook it because it can't be, cannot be any simpler. I would like you to, just because it's cooked, I want you to ensure that you have the confidence to cook it. But equally, it is just treated just like a normal steak, okay? Just like a normal steak you would at home, raw that you get from the supermarket, you treat it exactly the same. I haven't brined it, I haven't seasoned it, it's just literally just been water bath in some Wagyu fat and that's it, okay? So we're gonna treat this like, essentially like it's a raw steak. The only purpose, and the main purpose of me for dining at home is I want to ensure that you're getting the right texture and the right cuisson. Cuisson is the cooking of that product. This should be cooked medium rare to medium. So no matter how much you butter it in the, in the pan, it will still be medium in the center, I can honestly promise you, okay? So we're just gonna pop our oven on, 180 as it should be anyway, obviously on your, uh, on your instructions. You can see my pan is smoking, that's absolutely ideal. A little bit of veg oil, and I said to you, we're gonna treat it just like a normal steak, which means we're gonna season it like a normal steak. So a nice amount of table salt. I, unpopular opinion, I would always use table salt when you are cooking with seasoning, essentially with a steak, because uh, more than sea salt, it's just gonna come straight off that steak. It's not gonna be, uh, it's not gonna attach itself to it at all. A little bit of salt and pepper, because pepper goes really well with, uh, with red meat, turn that right up. And we're gonna get a set of tongs as well. And we want, as I said to you guys, we're gonna roast this just like a normal steak, okay? Just in a pan. This is for one person, obviously, the majority of you guys have got quite to share. Um, because of the portion as well, some of you who have got a box to share, you may have two individual steaks, that's just because of the portioning, because I have to cut maybe some sinew out or some fat off, etc. You may have two individual steaks as well, so. Either way, it gets cooked exactly the same way, no one's losing out, no one's got the exact same product. Right, it all. Again, there's a little fat layer on there as well. So, get that bit. That's taking all that up. Just very simply caramelised. You can see the heat on that pan is so, so warm. It's so, so hot. That's all we're doing. Nicely caramelising all that steak. We will be finishing up with butter as well, but not just yet. Okay, I was getting my shallot as well. Just getting it ready. Obviously, it's been completely surrounded with, uh, with some white beef fat. Beautiful. Okay, so all the sides as well. It will feel like a, like a raw steak because it was so soft in the sense it will feel pretty much like a raw steak as well. So. Yeah, that beautiful colorization. Final size. Beautiful. I'll stick it back on that flat side there. I'm going to put my shallot in. Get a little bit of colour, a little bit of thyme, and some wagyu fat in there as well. Don't be afraid of the heat, guys. Crack a window if you need to. I'm going to get all that nice and coloured in the shallot because it's pretty cooked. cooked the shallot will colour up straight away. Okay, so nice, in control as well. Now, some butter. Guys, do not be shy with the butter at all. Get the butter in there. A little clove of garlic, I'm just going to crush it. Clove of garlic in there as well. If you have a little bit of thyme, put a little bit of thyme in there as well. It's going to gain and feel that flavour. Beautiful shallot, nice and caramelised and roasted. A fresh tray. We're going to pop this onto the fresh tray in a second. Make sure that's all done. Shallot beautifully caramelised. Be nicely caramelised, and again, because they, you know, we bought it out a good couple of hours beforehand, that means that we've uh, we brought it up to room temperature as well, so it won't take that long for the uh, won't take that long for the, the heat to penetrate that steak. So, Jerusalem artichokes, these have been roasted by themselves. I just want to get the Jerusalem artichokes used to that heat and heat and, and flavour, okay? And we're not going to let any of these butter go to waste, as you know. We don't wait anything. Okay, so juice the marsh chokes on the same tray as well. That's just to get a little bit of heat in there. And then butter, on top of there, on top of there, on top of there, all in, and then 
we take that tray with all those gorgeous ingredients on and pop it in the oven. And I think on the instructions, I think I put 10 minutes, I think. Guys, depending on, this is obviously an individual piece, so that'll take about six to eight minutes. It needs a rest of about eight minutes as well, okay? So six to eight minutes in there, I'll probably turn it over halfway through, okay? Just to keep on top, we're going to turn it after about, after about three to four minutes, I'll turn it over. Those guys who are sharing, about 10 minutes. Those guys are, who are tripling it up on a big piece of it, it'll take about 12 to 15 minutes, okay? But just keep touching, keep touching. I don't know how hot your oven is. If, you're hot, if your oven's super warm, the three piece would only take 10 minutes. It's just always about touching, but honestly, that'll probably take around six to eight minutes, okay? Nothing more. So join me in about six minutes, and I'll bring that out. Halfway through, I'll flip it, but I'll bring that out to about six to seven minutes, which I'll tell you, and then we'll leave it to rest while we get everything else together, okay? Cool. Okay, guys, so the uh, oven is just about to go off. It's uh, in the last minute, so there we are. Sorry about the noise, it's super, super loud. So the oven just about, just gone off, obviously, that was, that was four minutes at 180. Now I'll just turn the beef over. I also turn the shallot and I also turn the juice and last chokes over as well. Um, yeah, I'll bring it out now. There we are, guys. So you can see the beef. So I did flip that over again. As you can see, it's, well, it's beautifully roasted. And it just needs that rest, just like a normal steak. Okay, just because I've, I've pre-cooked it, it still needs a little rest. The shallot looks absolutely delicious. Super, super soft and beautifully roasted. The Jerusalem artichokes are beautifully soft as well. Taking all that wagyu. So basically join us in like four to five minutes after that's rested. Keep it in a lukewarm place but the, the center of that will be beautifully and warm. And then I'm gonna carve it live here. And if it looks absolutely horrendous in the middle, then I've only got myself to blame. I hope it doesn't. In the meantime, you've got your shiitake ketchup, which you'll get a lot more than this. This is literally just scraping the bowl. Shiitake ketchup, that, heat that up in the microwave, but don't heat up in this. Don't do what I did in the celeriac. Put it into a tra transfer it into a microwaveable container and heat that up, or just alternatively do it on, in a pan. And then my sauce is on the back here as well. And I'll just gently heat that up just before we start to slice the wagyu, so we don't need to reduce it, we just want to heat it up. Okay, so join us in about three and a half minutes now, when, once that's rested, and I'll carve it, and we'll plate it, and then I'll eat it, and you'll eat it, and hopefully you enjoy it. See you in a bit. Okay, guys, so it's been five minutes with the Wagyu. My sauce is on, so you have your bone marrow uh, in there melted, and also you have beautiful chopped pieces of truffle as well. You're welcome. My shiitake ketchup is nice and hot, juice some artichokes, everything's perfect. But is the beef. Let's have a look. Okay, so uh, guys, you can cut this however you like. I would recommend cutting it against the grain. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly just tell you what I mean by against the grain. So all the grain, the lines, are going in that direction. Okay, so I'm going to cut bang against it. It's okay if you go with the grain, but going against it when you chew it or, or cut it on a plate, it'll be a lot softer. Okay, so. I love all these sort of charred and, and crunchy bits, but if you want to cut it off, you can do. I think it's a waste, but if you want to cut it off, you can do. Okay, let's go inside. Okay, perfect. Juicy, delicious rump of wagyu. Oh my God, the smell is unbelievable. Okay, look at that. Beautifully medium, beautifully pumping, with some lovely juices in there as well guys okay as you can see this is literally the most perfect one there is as you can see a little bit of gristle through there can you see that and again that'll be super firm but obviously it's just like any rump steak you can cut around it but look how much beef you've got you've got absolutely loads not many of them will have that to be honest it's only a couple of the tail pieces but again you will so i wanted to mention it to make sure that you're aware that potentially you'll get that it's not offensive at all as I said, it is quite whistling and chewy, so just be careful when you eat it. If you do want to discard it, discard it, guys. Okay, so your beautiful Wagyu roasted shallot, your Jerusalem artichokes, your beautiful mushroom ketchup, right on the side, and this is just like it's seasoned with sherry vinegar, and it just gives it a real sort of vibrant like um, acidity which I just absolutely love. Okay and then in here you've got a lovely bit of bone marrow and truffle sauce and the smell is just absolutely unbelievable. I haven't reduced it too much. I'll give you a load, I'll give you absolutely loads of sauce. It's 
plenty of sauce here. And there we are guys, quite an autumnal, wintry looking dish. Certainly won't disappoint. So your Wagyu rump with your roasted Wagyu shallot, your roasted Wagyu uh, Jerusalem artichokes, your shiitake ketchup at the back, and the sauce is a bone marrow sauce with, uh, with obviously pieces of bone marrow, beef sauce, and your truffle as well. So guys, I hope you enjoy. I'm super happy with that. There's no eight minutes for either side. It's cooked beautifully in the center. It's, it's that little bit of bristle. If you do have it, guys, just cut it out. And I uh, hope you enjoy. Thank you so much, and we'll see you in however, however long for your dessert. Okay, guys, hope you enjoyed your uh, main course. Uh, me and Mikey just devoured that single rum. We thought it was absolutely delicious. Uh, let's say with the gristle guys, just obviously just cut through it. Uh, super, super simple. Dessert, guys. And we are going to have a delicious uh, baked banana and vanilla sponge, which is just in there. And you also have a delicious salted caramel ice cream, which you'll put copious amounts of vanilla in there as well. And then you have a delicious uh, chocolate cremo. Uh, which is obviously there as well, which essentially is like a really thick, rich, um, well, essentially it's like a, like a thick mousse, like a ganache, and we can gently whip up. Uh, so super simple guys, uh, literally in the tray, pop that in the oven for about four to five minutes, uh, just to heat through beautifully. Alternatively, you can pop it in the microwave. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it because it goes a little bit too sort of um, moist and wet. You sort of want it nice on the outside, and then it's nice and heating and warm through the center. And if the banana is quite sort of chunky, quite large, that should uh, heat through nicely as well. Okay, so I'm just gonna pop that into your pan. I won't, I won't heat ours up, uh, for obviously the essence of the video. With your, um, got a nifty little trick with your with your um, cremeau, uh, get in a nice hot spoon, and that, that water's literally just come off the, uh, off the uh, in the kettle, and then very gently, just with your super rich cremeau, just get it out like, like a ball, and just pop it by the side, and then again, dip back into your boiling water, it should be good. I want to see your Instagram and Facebook as if you did. Almost create a well, just push down and you know, create a little well, just like that on there. I mean, this is like super rich. A banana and chocolate, obviously, is just a complete natural thing. Uh, I'm going to leave the salted caramel because that's obviously a portion for you guys. I'm just going to take it straight from the, the ice cream churn. It's got a nice little spoon. You can almost pop that in the well itself. It looks super cool. But also it like, tells you to sort of go straight through everything and enjoy it together. And that's it, it doesn't need a sauce, it's super, it's, it's the cakes are really moist, the chocolate's super rich and creamy, the ice cream's a lovely colour, um, a lovely colour, a lovely colour contrast and, a, and a, a, te a temperature contrast as well. Enjoy it together, super rich, super indulgent. That is your dine at home Christmas Eve, oh, sorry, New Year's Eve dessert. And then to finish it off, bringing it back, had enough of mince pies, because it's just, Who's, everyone's had enough of mince pies. We've got fruit and nut fudge, uh, which has got hazelnuts and pecans in, with a little bit of dried cranberry and some raisins in there as well. Enjoy that with your aperitif, uh, sorry, your digestif or your tea, coffee, whatever you want to enjoy it with. And that concludes our final dine at home of the year, New Year's Eve special. Thank you to absolutely any, every one of you who have purchased the box this year. Thank you so much to everyone who's purchased the box equally. Um, to turn tonight. Thank you so much guys. We will see you. We are back the week commencing 18th of January. Mike is completely lost in the background. 18th of January we are back. Uh, enjoy uh, your break guys uh, over Christmas obviously in New Year. Uh, hopefully you enjoy the box as well. Again thank you so much. Have a fantastic New Year. Here's to a better 2021. We'll see you on the 19th of January uh, for our um, first menu of the year. In the meantime me and Mike are going to get off and have a couple of weeks rest while well, and recharge with the batteries. There is someone taking over the Dine at Home boxes the week before we come back. More coming soon. Little hint, someone from MasterChef. So, see you on the 18th, but a week before, the guy from MasterChef coming in and doing boxes for us as well. So, see you then guys. Hope you've enjoyed New Year's Eve and wish you all a very, very happy New Year.